Hello, I am going to do a quick tutorial on how to make an elderberry syrup um, using this kit. <laughs> if you just purchased this kit, that's why you're getting this tutorial. So let me just show you real quick. It tells you on the back the ingredients that you have. It also tells you the dosage and here is the recipe. But some of you feel a little bit more comfortable if you see me do it in a video. So, um, first of all, you want to open it up and you want to grab out this handy dandy little tea um, bag that I got for you. And basically, you just dump everything that's in here. Now, the first, sorry, I have to pay attention while I'm doing that. The first 30 kits or so that I made, I did not put um, ginger root in there because I couldn't find a good source. I finally found a good source. So this one, and from here on out, um, you'll find ginger root is already in there. But if you don't see ginger root as one of the ingredients, then you'll need to grab your own ginger root, just a third of an inch of the ginger root, okay? Um, so what you'll have to, get for your, okay, so this is what you supply for it. Um, water, your own local honey, ginger root if it's not listed, and half a lemon, okay? So you wanna get yourself a nice little saucepan. You'll put four cups of water right into there. And then you're gonna wanna turn it on high and get the water boiling. And once it starts boiling, then you'll wanna, then I'll um, tell you the next little step. So you're gonna get the um, water boiling. And I wanted to tell you real quick, on here it says it makes 32 ounces. That depends on um, if you cook it down like you're supposed to, um, how much honey you put in there. And so it could be anywhere from 24 to 32 ounces. So I just wanted you to know that when you start pouring um, the syrup into bottles. So. Over here it says boil four cups filtered water in a medium saucepan, reduce the heat, and add contents into the mesh bag. So we've already added the contents into the mesh bag. I'm just waiting for my water to boil, then I'll come on back. Okay, so you've got your water boiling, and you'll take your little tea bag with all the things inside. I opened it up because you're gonna wanna get half of a lemon, and you wanna squeeze it in there over your, <laughs> because you want to get it, actually, I'm going to squeeze it into the water that has not become syrup yet. You might get a few seeds in there, but it's okay. Um, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it inside my bag. I'm going to close it up and I'm going to let it steep for about 20 minutes. I'm going to turn it down to simmer. So I see that there's a couple of seeds in there. It might be better actually to squeeze your lemon into the bag and then close it up and then put it into your boiling water and let it steep. So you wanna turn down the temperature to, I don't know, like medium, low, medium, kinda of in between medium and low, you decide. But you want it to be able to simmer kind of the boiling um, for about 15 minutes or so. so. I'll touch base in a second. Okay, so when it's steaming and ro rolling, then you want to be sure to turn it down, like I said, to medium to low. Look at this really yummy color that it's starting to turn. It's like this, um, it's kind of like a maroon, really yummy maroon color. I love it. It's going to be good. Now, be sure to smell it a little bit. Mmm, that smells good. Somebody asked me if they could put more than four cups water in there. Absolutely. It'll just be a little bit weaker, um, but it'll give you more, um, more volume, but it'll be a little bit weaker dosage. Does that make sense? So you could do up to, I've even seen recipes um, that do six cups of water. We just did four. So you decide. Okay, so you have let, my timer just went off, literally. Um, and you have let it boil down, simmer down, and it looks amazing. I, I guess you can't really see it very well, but it looks so yummy, yummy, yummy. You have done a great job. Um, so what I would do is pour, I would hold onto the bag, I would pour all of the syrupy stuff. Ouch, that's kind of hot. Woo. 
Okay, pour all the syrupy stuff into a glass container. I've got mine into a glass bowl. And then, there we go. Okay, that's better. Whew, that was starting to hurt my hand. Um, yeah, so look down here. <laughs> so I poured it into a glass bowl. See it? Okay, and then I put my little strainer over there. I like to smash it with this. Um, you could use your hands if you wanted to. A, right now it's way too hot, so you could let it all um, get to room temperature before you smash it, or you can smash it right now. And you can kind of see, you can't see it, but there's um, quite a bit that comes out when you are smashing, so don't leave it in the bag, all right? Okay, so basically after I smash it, I'm gonna let it sit to get to room temperature. Um, and that's really important because I'm about to put some local honey in there. And so let me just tell you as I'm kind of waiting a second here, um, you want to grab local honey local to you. You don't want my local honey if you don't live in Kentucky, right? So grab some local honey. Um, this one's from Chrisman Mill. And I have on the recipe, it says to do half a cup, but that's like just an average amount. Some people like even up to a full cup. Okay, so you'll put a cup of honey in to this bowl once it gets room temperature. Okay, so real quick, somebody asked me why a glass bowl? And my reasoning is that you don't wanna put it in plastic. Hot water, plastic, it will actually leach petrochemicals out of plastic. So you could also use a stainless steel bowl, which is what I use when I'm making my big batches. Um, so stainless steel, ceramic, or glass is great. Just don't use plastic. Okay, so now that it's at room temperature, um, you're gonna wanna put one cup full or half a cup full of honey. I just happen to know for my family for one batch um, how much we like. So don't don't judge, okay? <laughs> Anyhow, I love local honey. Um, I've just been walking, watching a docu series on um, on Netflix. Oh my gosh, it's called Rotten, R-O-T-T-E-N, and there's a whole thing that talks about honey beekeepers, um, just all that they go through. So shout out to the local honey beekeepers. My goodness. Um, so that is about the right amount that goes down and it's about right here that's about as much so it's a little bit over um, three-fourths of a cup so my kids like it really sweet um, I'm gonna make it so they will eat it right um, I want them to be taking it so I'm gonna make it so I know that they would do it <laughs> anyhow okay so then I use my fancy whisk and um, incorporating it I definitely um, if I'm making it for myself it might be worth um, taking a little sample of it because if you want to put more honey in it, this is the time to do it. Yeah, I think we're going to need a little more honey. <laughs> um, so the other secret that I do is I add essential oils to my batches. So you could choose which one you want to use. I would, I, I'm kind of picky about which brand I use, but that's a whole nother video. <laughs> Um, so I use Orange Vitality and Copaiba. Copaiba helps with inflammation and Orange Vitality makes it taste like a creamsicle. So I would definitely taste this without the oils, see what you think. Mmm, that's perfect. Alright, so then I take my bottle. Now you choose whichever bottles you want. I already put my oils in this bottle. Yeah. This one's for my family. So what I will do is I use a funnel just because this girl spills a lot. <laughs> and I dump it in there. I'm trying to think of what else you'd want to know before I let you go, because I'm not going to watch you spill me spill it in. I'm not going to let you watch me spill it in there. Um, I hope this helped. I hope that you feel more confident in what you're doing. You bought this kit. You can do this. It's awesome, and your family's going to love it. The dosage is on here. Adults take half to one tablespoon a day. Children take half to one teaspoon a day. If you're sick, then you'd want to take that dosage, <laughs> take the larger of the two, you know, the options every two to three hours until your symptoms disappear. And one other thing to mention in here, be sure that when you have your elderberry, make sure that you shake it up 
before you pour it out because sometimes the honey goes to the bottom and sometimes the oils float to the top. So you wanna shake it up and put this in the refrigerator. As soon as you pour it from here into there, it needs to stay in the refrigerator. If you keep it refrigerated, it should last up to six months. All right, guys, have a great day. Oh, if you have any questions, just text me. That's the best way to get a hold of me. 806-438-5850. 806-438-5850. See ya.